Okay, so today we're going to talk about functions now. Okay, I have my regular program with an uh, imported scanner just in case I need it. And what I'm going to show you is how to do functions. Functions are, are, are a way of doing procedures and isolate those procedures from the rest of the program. So then you can debug it. For example, if I have an array, um, if I have, or say for example, well they can be used as shorthand for a procedure. So when I do system dot out dot print line, hello there, okay, and then I I can do many system dot out dot print line, but it gets tedious to write and it's not intuitive. So why don't I create a command where I can say print and then put something and then it'll print that. Creating that command means creating a function, okay? Functions, again, are shorthand for procedures. That means they're commands that you can use instead of calling a whole procedure. You do them outside of this public static void main method, okay? Functions and method, by the way, they're the same. So the same, the first function we're going to create is a print function. So I am outside of the main method. You see I'm outside of the first uh, curly braces for the first time. I'm going to create a function. It's going to be public static void and then I'm, I'll say print. Print. Now, when I call print, I want to call it like this. So in my main program, for example, I want to say print hello. I want to be able to do that. Well, so I call the function print and then what I I do is I give the function a string to print. So I'll say print open parentheses and then this will receive a string that I will call text for example. I could call it anything I want. So this will be a public void print. That's the name of the function. This is what it receives and then open braces close braces and what does this function do? It just calls system.out.println with the text that I passed it. This text here, I can then use this text in the function. So I'll just print that text. That's all it's going to do. So let's test this program. Compile and run. And it'll say hello, beautiful. It printed hello. And the good thing about this is then I can print how are you and then I can print um, by three things much more simpler than writing system that out of print line. Every time I say print and then a string, what it's going to say, it's going to go here. It'll find the print function with a string called text and it will execute whatever's in here. So this is effectively just like say system that out print line at every uh, single time there. So let's compile it and run it and we'll see that it prints hello how are you by so now we have we can always create this print function and use it in our program another function for example if we want to do a longer procedure might be a function that takes an array and computes the sum right remember that in the arrays uh, class we did that so let's say I have an, an array double my grades um, my grades equals new array, whoops, new double five, for example, right? And then what I'm going to do is instead of computing the sum with a for loop, it'd be great if I could say double sum equals um, sum, I mean, sorry, sum, uh, ah. It'd be great if I could say double sum equals, I don't know, uh, summation of my grades, right? Or add my grades, how about that? Short names are beautiful. Add my grades, right? And then I will say double average equals um, sum divided by my grades dot length. And then I can print 
your average is AVG. It'd be great if my program could do this, right? But for some, we need to create a function that is called add and receives my grades, which is a double array. Okay? A double array. So it receives my grades, which is a double array. Now, the problem is I don't I don't have my grades yet. I'm not gonna fill them out with the scanner. For now, I'm just gonna fill them by hand. You know how to fill them with the scanner. So I'll say my grades sub zero equals uh, three point four, and then I'll just fill in all of the grades here by copying and pasting, which is magic. My grades one two. 3, 4, and this is 3.4, 4.0, 4.0, 3.4, and 4.0. That should give us an array of approximately 3.7 something, okay? So I'll compile it. It's not going to run because I do not have the add function created yet. So I will create it here public static void add. What kind of things does add receive? It receives a double array and it'll call, I'll call it grades. Okay. Basically, I can call add if I pass it something that is of kind double array. Here I'm calling add and I'm passing my grades, which is a double array, an array of doubles, I'm sorry. Okay. Now what do you do with that array that is now called great because that's the name that I'm passing into the function. Well, I'm going to do a for loop for int i equals zero. i is less than grades dot length, right? So less than the length of the array, i plus plus. And what I'm going to be doing this is storing this in a variable called sum. So I need a double sum. And I'll be storing this in a variable called sum. So sum plus equals grades sub i and sum starts at zero okay so that will sum the arrays let's see if this works we'll compile it it's telling me that uh, void and require double exactly so right now I have a function add that by all standards if you look at the arrays uh, video what it's doing is adding all the elements in the array. Now that addition I am putting into a variable called sum here, okay? Or addition or whatever, a variable called sum. For a function to return a value that I can then use in sum, I need to go to the function and say return sum. It is not enough that I have a variable call of the same name. That doesn't matter at all. Okay, so this variable could have been called addition. Okay, and then I'll just have to return my computation. So in addition, I'm leaving all the sum, but then I have to return it out of the function. Okay, so I'll just compile this. Uh, it still says incompatible types. Although I'm returning addition, what kind of variable is addition? Oh, addition is a double. So instead of void here, I'll put double. Okay? Void, like here, you put when a method does something. Here, for example, you don't return the text to be used. You just print it out in the screen. But here, you're going to return a double number to be used. Okay? And that is the difference. So let's compile it and run. And then let's say your average is 3.76. Why? Because it, it added the grades and returned that addition into the variable sum. Then it computed the average using the simple formula. And then it just printed this. Remember, functions that you're going to use the computation of, like in add, you're going to use whatever it's adding, need a return type that you put right next to the name of the function add. So add, in this case, if you read this line, you know a few things. Add is the name of a function. It receives a kind of things that is like my grades, which is a double 
uh, an array of doubles, and it returns a double number. Okay, in the function, this is this is represented as this. Add. This is the name of the function add. It receives a double that I'm going to call grades for the effects of the computations inside the function, and it returns a double. When I do my computations, I do have to say return and then the double number that I want to return. Functions can return anything, but there are some special functions that just perform something without letting the user know, and those will return void. That concludes our functions uh, video.